So the thing with oxalates though, too, is that they, they bind to minerals because, um, yes. and, and that's, well, that was what was so messed up in these animals is that their teeth, they have pictures in the studies of their teeth and there's no minerals in them, the kidney. Now, when we started using organic acid testing, they had oxalate on the test. So I was measuring, you know, all kinds of populations. And then what I found is that oxalate is elevated in a lot of people with chronic pain syndromes mm-hmm. and with people with fatigue issues and people, you know, you're you're really concerned about people with um, more mental health issues. And we had a huge number of people who joined our group, found out their oxalate was low, was high, I'm sorry, and lowered the oxalate. And after about six months or so, a lot of them started talking to each other on the on my group and they were saying, Oh my gosh. I've been anxious for years and I've been on this, all this anti-anxiety medication. I don't need it anymore. Wow. That's, that's where I think that's, that's what really fascinates me about the oxalate conversation. And I think it goes back to what we actually started the conversation with, which is the, the sulfate transporter mechanism where, so if you're the type of person who you're, you're consuming a lot of oxalate, it almost sounds like the body starts getting flooded with oxalate and then taking it one step further. If you don't have the specific microbes in your gut that can properly metabolize oxalate, which in 2020 with the amount of antibiotics that, you know, so much of us in the population have taken, chances are we don't. (laughs) And, you know, we, we have these, we start getting these health issues and we say, well, I got to get healthy. What do I do? I start drinking spinach smoothies and I eat nuts and I do all this stuff. And then I start dousing myself with, with oxalate. The oxalate goes in the blood. The sulfate transporter starts seeing excessive amounts of oxalate and they go, well, we, you know, we have to, it almost sounds like it prioritizes it because there's so much of it available, starts bringing that into the mitochondria. And I'm sure for, like you said, genetics is more of a, of a, of a system of transporters and enzymes and reactions. And so if you have, depending on what your genetic code is, those oxalates are going to go into these different places. And for some people, it manifests as joint pain or muscle pain. For some people, it's fatigue. And then for a lot of people, it's depression and anxiety because you're literally slowing down the ability of the mitochondria to properly produce ATP. And so, you know, again, this could take the form of, you know, thyroid issues. It could take the form of of a million different reasons why you would have anxiety and depression. Is is that about like, right? Because that's kind of what I'm getting from this conversation. Absolutely. 